laptops, they're not really that well known for, you know, expandability or upgradability. At least in the modern day, you know, pretty much everything is all soldered together, uh, maybe even glued together, unfortunately. But believe it or not, this was not always the norm. In fact, back in the 2000s especially, it was not uncommon at all on, you know, even pretty standard laptop like this Inspiron, which was not a high-end laptop by any means in 2006. It was not uncommon for there to be these expansion doors on the bottom of the laptop. And this would allow you to easily upgrade uh, components of your laptop, such as the hard drive right here, and even the memory, and oftentimes even adding or replacing and upgrading uh, your wireless card. And you know, if your DVD drive uh, breaks, one screw right here, you undo that, drive slides right out. <sighs> Laptops just used to be so easy to work on and upgrade and man, nothing was glued together. I'm sad now. But what was also upgradable on most of these old laptops was the CPU, because CPUs were very rarely in laptops actually soldered to the motherboard. They were all socketed for the most part, just like they would be on a desktop motherboard. So of course this meant that if you were able to find a faster chip and uh, the BIOS of the laptop and stuff supported it, you could upgrade it. However, unlike, you know, hard drive, the RAM, and this kind of stuff that most people would normally be comfortable with upgrading, uh, the CPU was often, you know, buried in between, you know, all this stuff, and you'd have to tear apart the laptop, you know, a substantial amount to actually get to the CPU socket. But still, for the determined user, it was possible to upgrade it. However, you may have noticed that there's a third door here on this laptop. If we undo the screw, there's a copper heatsink, the heatsink for the CPU. And if you undo the screws that are holding it on, and use this convenient pull tab that's there, you just find a lot of dust, but there's your processor, right there. That, that's, that's the CPU. It's that easy. You know, it's just really weird that this wasn't a more common thing, especially on like Dell's more business-oriented laptops, you know, like Latitudes and stuff like that. you think this would be a more common feature, but no, for some reason, they did it on a basic Inspiron that was more of like a lower-end machine meant for more like home use? I I don't get it, but, you know, it is what it is, I guess. Now, before we perform what is quite possibly the easiest laptop CPU upgrade ever, we should probably take a quick little look at, you know, the computer itself. So if you happen to find one of these or you're on the look for one of these, uh, you know which to buy. So this is a Dell Inspiron B130, which currently has a Celeron M inside, which is kind of just a rebranded Pentium M. Um, I think it might be a little bit cut down, though. And, you know, for the age of this machine, um, you know, it's a little worn on the trackpad and the keyboard, but, I mean, this thing is in remarkable shape, and this is one thing that I'm absolutely stunned by. I wonder if the previous owner uh, just left it open all the time like this, because the, the hinge on the screen is tight. That wobble you're seeing, that's my table wobbling. This hinge feels like it was never, ever moved. I love Dell. Their hinges, after maybe 10, 15 years of use from this time period, don't necessarily hold up the best. But, like, oh, it's so good. Look at that. Look at the little... It, a little bounce. That's how that's how good the springs and everything are still are in this hinge. That's just oh, that's just remarkable to me. I I absolutely love that. It'll be nice to not have a screen that literally has this much play in it. 
And you know, this laptop isn't particularly special. It doesn't really have that much going on. We just have, you know, standard DVD, RW drive on that side. You know, power jack is the only thing on the back. And then these are all the ports we have, you know, modem, ethernet, it, it, I don't even know if it's gigabit. It's probably just like 100 megabit, which is fine, but you know, it would've been nice to have gigabit. A VGA connector, which it had the room for the screws and they didn't put it on. No idea how much that irritates me. Got three, I'm assuming by, you know, 2006, this would have been all USB 2. I guess they, I guess they had to save the 25 cents and not put a fourth port there, but you know, whatever. Got the audio input and output. And again, another thing, expandability we don't get on modern laptops. Express card, which was a thing you could get. Uh, I think you could add like, you know, probably like SD card readers and other stuff. I think they even made like some sound cards for Express Card. Express Card was was weird. I've I've never used it, but yeah. And then just some speakers on the front. That's that's literally it. <laughs> that's all we get on the laptop. Pretty basic. Uh, but you know, a, a decent little machine even in its stock configuration would have been perfectly fine for, you know, average 2006 stuff. All right, so let's go ahead and just uh get it fired up. All right, so I updated this to the latest BIOS, which is uh, revision A10, um, which was a bit of an ordeal. For whatever reason, the updater just refused to work in Windows, so I had to plug in a USB floppy drive, boot DOS off of a floppy, and then somehow it just worked fine in DOS. I, I don't know why. And so yeah, the CPU that's in there right now is a 1.6 gigahertz Celeron M, which upon looking into it, I think Intel just rebranded the Pentium M's as Celerons towards like the end of their life because it has the same cache, it uses the same uh, Dothan, Dothan core, I don't know how you say it, um, that the Pentium M we're going to put in has, so... I'm guessing that they just rebranded it at some point. And we got two gigs of DDR2 in dual channel, and I believe from looking online, two gigs is the max, so it'd be nice if I could put in four, um, but two gigs realistically should be good enough. Of course, we got Intel 915 GM graphics, you know, not really anything exciting. 100 gig hard drive, and there's just one other setting I want to point out because I find it really interesting because I've never really seen any other Dells from this time period or even really any laptops that have this. You may have noticed that there's um, a border around the image. It's not taking up the whole screen. Normally, you know, the BIOS would just, you know, be full screened. But there's this setting called LCD panel expansion that actually allows you to, I'm guessing, just display the native uh, image without doing any sort of scaling or anything. And I believe you can set it down to like 640 by 480 like in Windows, and I believe it actually will only take up 640 by 480 pixels on the screen, which is really cool. And of course monitors and stuff, you know, can do this, but it's it's just not a feature I really have ever seen that much on laptops. Yeah, I'm running Windows 2000 on it just because, well, it has drivers for like all the hardware. Everything works perfectly fine, so yeah, this is just kind of my 2000 laptop, I guess you could say. Of course, this originally shipped with XP, and I believe later on you could have gotten it with, I mean, the sticker says Vista Capable, well, you know how that whole fiasco is. It probably would have been an, an okay Vista machine, I guess. The graphics probably were not gonna let you run Arrow. Actually, I don't know. Can these uh, Intel GM graphics support Arrow? I have no idea. I've never tried installing <laughs> Vista on a machine like this. Yeah, so here's our CPU, the Celeron M380. Now, it does have the same Dothan core, Dothan, whatever, as the Pentium M760 that we're gonna be putting in there. 
However, uh, I didn't initially realize until just now, looking at the chip, there are actually uh, two other uh, improvements. Uh, one is that the front side bus on the Celeron M only runs at 400 megahertz, where on the uh, Pentium M760, it runs at 533, as you can see down there. And then on the cache, the Celeron M only has one meg, where again, on the Pentium M, uh, that actually has two. So I thought the Celeron M's were just like rebranded Pentium M's that, you know, Intel was trying to just use up old silicon they had lying around as like a budget option because, you know, by 2006 or whatever this machine was being sold, I mean, they already had like the core duo and all that kind of stuff going on. Uh, but no, I guess there was actually a, a difference, at least in cash and front side bus. So pretty interesting. We should be getting a fairly reasonable improvement and not just, you know, 400 extra megahertz like I initially thought. And then just so we have a uh, benchmark to run, uh, we'll just run Cinebench 2003. All right, so we get a score of 206, which from my memory is about on par with like a like a middle of the road Northwood Pentium 4. So I mean, for a mobile chip, that's not too bad. Um, of course, this is only running at 1.6 gigahertz when that Northwood CPU was like probably running at like from my memory, probably like 2.5, maybe 2.8 gigahertz, or something like that, so. All right, so let's not waste any more time and get on with an upgrade that honestly, I would say this is probably even easier than upgrading like a desktop, because you know, it's one screw for the panel and then four screws which are captive on the uh, pretty dirty heatsink. Also, this thing is solid copper. Wow. <laughs> Go ahead and kind of clean this up some. Uh, and I just blew all the dust back into my room. That's good work. Go ahead and clean it up. Uh, it's kind of a weird thermal pad. Actually, does this just peel off? This does. This is, oh, it's not as easy as I thought it would be. Oh, it's like metallic, but it's also got like paste in it. It's like, it's like foil, it's like a foil sticker. It's, can't say it's the way I would have done it, but yeah. Now there's more gunk on there. Really, guys? Okay, maybe this isn't as easy to upgrade as I thought it would be. They couldn't have just used, you know, regular paste, like human beings. <sighs> now I gotta scrape it off with my fingernail. That's gonna be under my fingernail for like a day, because it they never want to wash. Thermal paste just does not wash out from your skin. It just like stains it for like a good 24 hours. And it's really annoying. Well, actually, that's not that bad. It is pretty dry, so I guess that's not that surprising. I'm gonna claim that uh, that's good enough. Now we gotta switch over to a flat head. Because instead of a little lever, uh, it uses this little screw mechanism. It kinda slides it out of the way. And uh, yeah. There we go. Here's our seller on M. Now we got our. I'm assuming brand new, never used. I mean, it looks pretty new. It even has a official Intel carrier thing. In she goes. And pins are maybe slightly bent, but you know, it went in without too much fuss. Locked it in. Get some fresh paste going on. Now we just gotta put the heatsink back on, and uh, I don't remember which direction this went in. Um, oh, actually, just notice the uh, the metal here is keyed so that you can only put it in one way. <laughs> but yeah. And just gotta put the panel back on.
we're done. That was what, like maybe five minutes? And that was like five minutes because I was bumbling and talking to the camera. I could have did that in like two minutes if I wasn't trying to film this. That's, that's insane. All right, so uh, let's see if this thing turns on, hopefully. Got a green light. It went off. Second time? Uh-oh. I don't like that. Maybe if we just hold it down. I've seen that work sometimes for whatever reason. Yeah, like the fan the fans are not kicking up. This was supposed to be easy. Man, that was such a good spread, too. Yeah, that's unlocked. Huh. Yeah, it's not like I... It's not like there's a thing broken off the bottom or something like that. And, I mean, all the pins look fine. To me, at least. I think I may have identified a problem. You're probably not going to be able to see it on camera, but there's some, like, fuzz or lint on one of the pins. I'm going to see if I can, like, pick it off. I wonder, or it's like plastic. There's, like, plastic covering one of the pins. All right, it just, it just blew off. That's surprising, to say the least. I've never seen that happen, but if that was getting stuck down in the socket, um, that would explain the problem. Hopefully it's not anything else jammed down in the pinholes now. It's kind of... Let's take it in and out a couple times just to, just to make sure. I'm not going to redo the paste until I know for sure that it is actually going to work this time. Now this is not going to come off my finger for at least a day. That was it. Wow. It was some weird lint or something on the, <laughs> on the, on one of the pins. Wow. Pentium M, two gigahertz, minimum clock speed 800, um, max clock two gigahertz, and two megs of cache. I, actually, I don't even know if the, uh, the Celeron had, like, speed step in there. So, uh, this might actually have some energy, uh, efficiency savings, you know. If I ever had a battery that worked for this thing, which I might invest in one just to, just to see. It's still saying the memory speed is 400 megahertz. Um, so that's, that's a little disappointing. I was kind of hoping that would, that would go up to the, you know, the front side bus speed, but oh well. I suppose it's not the end of the world, but it could also just be the BIOS is kind of not detecting it right. Whatever, it, it's working. Uh, let, let me fix the, the thermal paste. All right, I went ahead and redid the thermal paste, uh, but let's not waste any more time. Let's go ahead and run some benchmarks, man. Oh, this is so exciting. Ah, oh, it even changed the, the logo to, say, Pentium inside instead of Celeron. There we go, Pentium M760, 90 nanometer, two gigahertz. Front side bus 533 and two megs of L2 cache. Uh, that's pretty cool. Yeah, the uh, frequency is still only you know 200 megahertz, you know 400 megahertz effective because it's DDR. That's weird. It's at a 2-3 ratio. Um, I doubt there's any way we could realistically change that in the BIOS. You know. I don't know, or maybe I'm just reading the the specs on the RAM wrong. If you guys know, I mean, it says 333 megahertz. I mean, in theory, it should be working, but uh, I don't know. All right, let's see what she can do. I'm hoping for at least like 250, maybe even higher. There we go, 260. So we did get above 250, like I was hoping. So. Yeah, that's a that's a pretty solid improvement, even with the RAM. 
you know, not running as fast as I, you know, was hoping it would. But yeah, let's check out uh, some web browsing with my pal. Now, I tried running YouTube on here before, and it, it worked at like 360p, if you were really patient. Yeah, well, it's not loading the page fast, to say the least. It's, uh, this is worse than than uh, the Pentium 4 when I had to use that for a month. But I will counter that with saying that my pal is not the most optimized browser. Uh, if I installed, like, maybe Windows 7 on here, used a more modern browser, it actually might be, you know, a little bit faster. So this is 480p right now, or I guess it wasn't. Let's see, can it handle 480p? Uh, almost. It can almost do 480p. Uh, but I think this is more comfortable at 360p. Again, that might be a little bit better on, like, maybe Windows 7 or Linux. Um, let's see. The problem with bringing up stats for nerds on a system like this is that it tends to lag it out more because of the transparency. Right, let's see. Four dropped frames so far? Sure, there's not a lot of action going on on, you know, in terms of motion, but it's not dropping any frames right now at, you know, 360p, which I know isn't that spectacular, but, uh, you know, like a early, like a first generation Atom netbook, I think is slightly worse than this, so, yeah, it's something. I'm not going to use this, obviously, for really watching YouTube, but it's just nice that it can kind of do it. The air doesn't even feel that hot coming out the back, so let's see what our CPU usage is right now. We are pegged at 100. That's not too surprising, but, you know, it's only now dropping frames because, probably because I brought up Task Manager, honestly. Yeah, if I just leave this sit here, it'll probably go just fine without dropping any frames. And I know this doesn't have too much to do really with the uh with the CPU upgrade, but you know, you know, even with the GM graphics, it it still can play some, you know, kind of late 90s games okay. Oh yes. Most certainly. All right, so I hope you guys enjoyed this, you know, pretty simple video. I just wanted to kind of do it cuz I thought it was interesting. So yeah, if you guys know of any other laptops that are, you know, pretty easy to upgrade like this one was for the CPU, uh, let me know. It'd be kind of interesting to kind of maybe compile a list just just to have, I guess. Uh, but yeah, if you find one of these laptops, uh, especially in good condition like I did mine, uh, yeah, definitely pick it up. I can recommend it just just for the coolness factor of you know being able to upgrade the CPU. So yeah, thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next video.